Barracuda, and the North American Sweethearts bring it home under the banner of Cognitive Pride. No one thought had a chance at the finals coming into this event. Coming as a number two. Oh, I'm a wonder! I'm a myself! Ripping through! Titan down! Falls three! A double kill for itself! It's Game a five minute! Right. Right. We're gonna go for the win! It's the world champions! Cognitive Pride! GG! Season 2, we say hello to Europe as adapting in Epsilon Esports slam it home. A huge play. Adapting's about to go up. He's going to come crashing down. Who's the target? It's going to be all three. And two will get stunned out. Oh, no. He's going to take tons of damage. Oh, no. Chaos Force move forward. They don't have enough time for this. They don't have enough time for this. No, it's a deicide. Ladies and gentlemen, Epsilon Esports. Season 3. New name, same roster. Two-time world champions, Raffer and NRG. Well, there's four members left, and into the sky goes adapting. The ultimate way down. The Titan is under siege. Energy are looking to be world champions again. Long live the king. And once again, the king is Europe. Season four. Polar Bear Mike brings it back for America. E United slams the hammer. Cracking and knock back. There's Death Walker controlling things. Panic Cat takes that Wolfie. Where's the remainder of the team fight? Death Walker That's one. The Edu, and E United keeps on going because Panic Cat That's died. two. Still pushing forward. They're at the Titan. Only two members to play defense. They can't do it. And that's the game. That's the series. That is your Snipe World Championship. Say hello to your North American victors, Paula Mike and EU United. Season 5, new map, new players, new teams, same destination. Who raises Thor's hammer? The Smite Pro League. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the placement stages for the Smite World Championships. Finch here, I'm joined by J Mac Tucker. Happy to have you. Taco here with me as well. And I know that you all are both excited. I mean, this is going to be a big day. And things are really starting to heat up now with day three of the competition coming into play. I think a lot of people are really expecting to see some sparks fly. And more importantly, we finally get a chance to see a little bit of Obey in Space Station. And we also get to see how the minor league handles up against one of the other SPL teams here. This time they're going up against Mouse Esports, the same in the uh, European side of the matchup. That's right. There's a lot of, of, of important matchups coming up throughout the day. I mean, this is huge implications. No one going home just yet. We're going to be in that upper bracket sign, so people still get some second chances, but definitely some big ones. But remember, everyone right now trying to earn their way towards HRX. For you all, you still have a chance. It's still going to be relatively easy. All you got to do is go to highresexpo.com and you can pick up your tickets there November 16th through the 18th. That's the big show that everyone's trying to make it to. And you're not going to want to miss out on any of the action. If you think that placement rounds are spicy as is, and you they will are. not believe what's going to be taking place because I can assure you things are bound to change. That's right. Things will get even more exciting once they finally make it there. We'll be taking four members from this placement stage of everything towards that uh, that dream hack where we already have four teams that are waiting on them. So it's hard with, with this many teams here to see who's going to make it there. But if you all need a recap, a quick go over with what happened yesterday, maybe you missed some of the action, you got a chance to take a look right here. It is day two, and uh, it appears everybody's woken up on the jesty side of bed, and I'm supposed to be the court jester. From a coaching perspective, I'm looking forward to facing Space Station. Uh, they recently got Dimmy as a coach, and it, they represent a brand new challenge. In this one is the fine bra on the back end, Titan below half HP, and that certainly will do it. Rival 2-0, it was not easy, but they take down Armada. Outside of that, you know, you just gotta be confident when you get to land. You can't uh, think that you can't win, then you definitely won't win if you think like that, so. I saw on Twitter PBM guaranteed that you're going to go 10 10-0 or better in, in each of these games. Uh, do you feel confident in that? And what are you going to give up if you don't go 10-0? Well, you'll obviously get your money back. And if uh, afterwards, <laughs> a, a public apology. At it, Masto going to Sonic Boom on the Titan. I think this one's done for, Tom. Two players stuck in the fountain, and that's Counterlogic Gaming taking the set. And if you ask them, business as usual. The team for me feels, I mean, I feel really good because I feel like everyone understands what I'm trying to do, understands what like my play is, and they respect my shot calls a lot. So because people respect me in the sense of shot calling, it's really easy for me to make good plays. And, and you can even tell that Zadman's a 
doing a hard 180 from his old style in game number one when he played the new AWA, the mage quote unquote ADC slash hunter position where you're thinking more of team fights when you've kind of And this was the kind of win that Trifecta needed, right? You were saying it needed to be convincing and I think that they can feel good. As his beads up, here comes Texi, knocked up, knock him down. Atletico defend their base for 30 straight minutes and they take the enemy down. Game one in the books, it belongs to the land down under. I don't care what anybody says, Benny Q cost our mod of that game. I, I, I if you have... want to make a joke out of the Oceanic team because you think that they're not going to get punished for it, that's what you get for it. Player strong, the Titan is going to go down. The minor leaders send Oceana back down under. That video made it clear it has been a tournament of ups and downs, upsets back on day one, very close sets on game two. So that just means it's very difficult for us to do our job, which is try and predict <laughs> what's going to be happening here in these games going forward. I mean, Taco, when, when it's when it's games like this, sets like this, where you don't know who's going to win, I mean, how much better does that make it when the competition is this close? Even looking at our very first set of the day, Obey versus Luminosity, that is already, I don't want to call it a tight knit race. I think that most people would probably be expecting to give that slight edge to obey and for good reason i think when you factor in their fall split performance the online portion looked really solid for them and prime making it out here to land it is really something i want to highlight because obey having their full five man roster is going to be very difficult for luminosity i think to try and deal with I think having Pretty Prime here is one of the big factors for Obey Alliance. When when we all heard that Pretty Prime was going to be gone, it was a little bit shakier for us. You know, bringing Flippo in, he is still a strong player in his own right, but having Pretty Prime here is a much more solid factor for Obey. And going up against Luminosity, Luminosity hasn't had the strongest of seasons compared to Obey Alliance, so we really can't write either team yes or no yet. It's been a going to be a big day, though. You saw some of those important matches in Signum going against Mouse Sports. That's going to be coming up later on. Space Station against SK Rival. I mean, playing a little bit later on as well. Those are going to be happening later on. But, I mean, this is a big day full of sets. The, the Obey versus LG, the one that you guys have kind of been talking about already, is one that that it is difficult not to favor Obey in. But this LG team, they've been prepping in. They've got a new look. They've got inbound in the support role. Do we really know what the top potential for this team really is until we see them up against some of the best? Well, that's what I really want to see from Luminosity is that little bit of a step up because when you compare it to their initial debut here at LAN, Luminosity did not look like they were prepared in the slightest. They nearly ended up losing that set to Nocturnes to begin with. And so now I think a lot of expectations have definitely risen because Clout himself even announced, we, you know, we didn't do a whole lot of prep for the Nocturne set. We will definitely be prepared for Obey, but... I'm still curious, how much prep did you actually put into this? If you're willing to admit that there was none involved for Nocturnes. It's going to take a lot of prep if you want to try and grab this set. But over on the other side, Obey are the ones who have a big matchup ahead of them as well, kind of the favorites here. Let's go ahead and take a listen to Hazer. I believe he's standing by for an interview to see their thoughts going into this set. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm here live in the Obey booth right now. Hazer's joining alongside me for today's game up against Luminosity. Hazer, uh, first set for you guys in this tournament. You've had a couple of days to sit back and see the competition. How are you feeling about how the competition looks? Um, so Luminosity obviously had a bit of a rough set against uh, Latin America, but you know we're not taking them lightly. I think a lot of the teams look, look really, really good. Everybody's obviously come into this event really prepared as that time of year. Everybody steps up, so... Yeah, we're just hoping we can follow in the other EU team's footsteps and, and you know keep the train rolling. So what's the plan today with the draft? Is it going to be anything specific against what you've seen out of Luminosity's weaknesses, or are you looking to just do the usual obey things? Yeah, we'll do obey things. I think uh, the important thing for us is just sticking to our guns. We look like the best team in the world towards the end of the split. So you know, I think if we play our game, we'll win. Bit of drama behind the scenes with you guys. Obviously, pretty prime, potentially not being able to make this land. And then last minute, the baby drops and all is good. Uh, was there any minor adjustments or major adjustments you had to make at the last minute because of this? Um, so as soon as we knew that Prime wasn't coming, we looked to pick up a sub. Uh, we tried out a few people and we tried out Flippo and Flippo turned out to be you know, really, really good. Um, mature beyond his years as well. Um, so he was great for us. So we practiced half and half. Um, so we have had slightly less practice than other teams will have with their full roster, but they played a kind of similar play style. So everybody's ready going into this. So we didn't really adjust our practice at all, to be honest. We just happened to be playing with an extra player some of the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, they play the same play style. We're going to pick the same picks regardless, and Prime's ready to rock and roll. Awesome. Last question before I get you, let you get back to it. Uh, Scoreline today for this set? 
Got to say two of to us. Okay, that's it from Hazer. Back to the desk. Thanks, Hindu, for that interview. There, always good to get to hear from Coach Hazer, one of our great minds here in the scene. And JMac, you heard him say that they think that they were looking like the best team in the world. Do you think they are the favorites just amongst these placement stage teams, amongst the teams that are here with Prime in this roster? I think that Obey has some of the biggest fans out there for them wanting to finally get that World Championship title. They have been a favorite, a fan favorite for so many of these players, between Captain Twig, Pretty Prime. I mean, there's so many names to go down the list for these guys, and they even do have a former World Champion on there with Raffer. So this could sure. be Obey's time here, but one thing that I really want to highlight that Hazer said was uh, not taking them lightly. That's something that we, ha that we have to see from these top teams is, yes, LG was the bottom seed in North America, but you cannot underestimate them. No, you, you absolutely cannot in this situation, and I'm glad to hear that from Obey because that's what we heard from LG, right? Talking that they hadn't maybe put enough prep into their match. Even though they didn't get all the scrim time with Prime, it certainly sounds to me like they're still fully prepared. LAN is just so different in comparison to online play that you can never really afford to count any team out. And I think that was something that Luminosity really had a serious wake up call to in their set from Nocturne. So I am fairly certain that this team would have gone through a lot of VOD review from that point forward. And they've also had time to kind of internalize everything that's been breaking down here at LAN because we have gotten a little bit of insight towards some of the European picks, I think, from watching these matches with Insignum, with with Mouse and yeah. I, I, even SK, for example, is another team that I think a lot of these North American teams have started trying to draw more um draw more picks towards and I think that the aggressive play style that North America has been known for for that early game portion might be taking a step back here in that set. Yeah, I definitely think there's a chance but their opponents on the other side LG will see how well they can make things work but we do get a chance to actually hear from their coach before they go into the match. Let's see where their mindset is with their interview. I'm here with coach Haiti, Haiti, what is it? Oh, it's a uh, Haiti. Haiti, let's go with that. We'll see how long that lasts until he changes it again, more than likely. Coach at Luminosity here today, uh, coming into this one. You guys have already played against Nocturnes day one. Talk to me about what went right, what went wrong. Did everything go as expected? Well, against Nocturne, I think we went into it like not giving them enough credit. We were underestimating them a lot. We assumed it was going to be a really easy, simple set. It was not. But for Obey, we're a lot more planned for it, ready for it, watching their VODs, going over our VODs, reviewing everything. We're pretty prepared for it. As I was going to get to next is obviously like Nocturnes was a test for you guys. Now you've got an even bigger test against Obey. Uh, is there any certain plans we're going to see here today? Is there anything special we're going to get to see? Uh, we have some stuff that if need be, we'll use, but if not, we would probably save it for the finals, but we still have some secret picks, you know, you'll see in the draft. Now, North America is a region as well. The coaches of the region haven't really been talked about too much through the years. Europe kind of stood out more. What is it that you're bringing to this team that's making an impact? Honestly, just having, a, I guess, an unbiased opinion is really useful in like a team setting. Because like, obviously, if you're playing, you, never, you usually never want to blame yourself. But like having someone that's not biased at all is really good for the team environment. Okay, final question before I let you go. I asked Hazer what he thought the scoreline was going to be. He's saying 2-0 Obey. What about you? 2-0, that makes no sense because um, I, I, the script says, um, so I, I have no idea what he's talking about. Maybe he got the wrong script. How did you find my script? I, 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 it was mailed to us. Did we get the wrong one? Because I think Hazer got the wrong one. Well, you guys at home will get to find out shortly whether this script is right or not. Let's get it back to the desk. What are you doing, Hindi? You gotta have better script security than that. Letting it get into the hands of the coaches and players. Mailing it to anybody these days, apparently. <laughs> yeah, we gotta, take one. we gotta do something about that. Make sure Hindu's keeping those on lock. But uh, it's good to hear some confidence there from LG and they're prepping more. And I think in this matchup in particular, you gotta focus in on Gino and his matchup up against Prime in that middle lane. Now that Prime is gonna be here, and with Gino making that swap over, I mean, it's gonna be tough going up against one of the best in the world in the middle lane. Especially when you don't have as wide of a god pool as Pretty Prime. Gino has been known to have a little bit smaller of the pool there, and a sure. lot of them are similar to Pretty Prime's pickups. The Vulcan in particular is probably the one that I'm mostly looking at for their mid lane matchup here, and Prime has shown that he's got all kinds of gods available to him. And one of the main reasons as well for a more limited god pool from Gino is probably because he just hasn't been playing this role anywhere near as long as Pretty Prime. It's a Pretty Prime swap, has yeah. multiple signature gods. You look at Vulcan, you look at Zeus, and y you are never really certain of which mage Obey are going to decide to plug and play. I do think that they have a flexible enough roster between Prime and Twig that they could run just about anything and make it work. But I don't feel like that's the case here for Luminosity. Luminosity have to cater a little bit more towards Gino if they want to find success here. Yeah, make sure they put him in the right position because it's so important that he 
at the very least stays even if not wins that matchup because so much of what Obey has done well has been playing specifically through Prime in that middle lane in this fall split. That's when things really started turning around. Him on the up watches, the Zeus's, these immobile mages kind of flipping the script for Obey. But we're in the picks and bans now. Obey will be that first pick selection and already banning away the Athena. Taco, is there anything in particular you're looking out for getting banned here? I mean, we've seen some Pele's, some Mercury's making it through. I mean, I gotta imagine we're gonna stop seeing that soon. It's hard to justify some of those jungler bans, though, when you think about Pretty Prime being with this Obey That's squad, so because you don't want to allow Obey to have their key pieces that they would want to utilize for that snowball effect. I'm thinking more towards possibly even a Zeus ban taking place here, maybe even Odin for Luminosity, just so they can prevent a, a classic Wombo combo from Obey. Honestly, I'm looking at a Freya ban here from LG because Pretty Prime showed exactly what sure. that goddess was capable of at the very start of the season with the breakout of the goddess, but it is the Baron Somdi banned away by Luminosity. A little interesting to see that one very early on, but Zele is a monster on this guy, and we saw what he could really do with it with that Titan defense. Yeah, and you made a good point, too. Baron hasn't been valued overall as as, as highly as he might have thought coming in, but Zele in particular does like to play this one, so that might be what LG's looking out for as Odin gets banned. He's kind of had a rise, it feels like, here lately. I think it's because of his dominance he can have in that laning phase and kind of force your opponent into other relics. Type. But it almost makes you wonder, why would Obey bother with banning away the Odin unless they're trying to prioritize something that is really tough time getting outside of that cage? Sure. So I'm thinking more towards the Erlang, Mercury, and Aphrodite. Those are the first three god picks that really come to mind. And Luminosity had the same thing in tow. Mercury going to get banned, and Erlang already hovered. Yeah, there it is. The Erlang Shen already locked in for Obey. Bay, no big surprises. Would not be surprised this went right over there to Twig. But I, you were talking about this Odin ban. j -Mac, I kind of like this ban being done if they are going to be putting Prime on one of those immobile mages. I, I like the Odin ban just in general with how much priority Terra, RTO, Mercury, Erlong, Pele, all of these yeah. are gods who really struggle up against that Odin. They're going to have to give a couple of them over to LG as we see the Terra is the first one locked oh, in. Wow. And looking at a very early op watch as well into the draft. Geno's had some success on this op watch pick, so I would not be surprised to see this one going over there to him. But this is a bit early. These are some gods that can definitely be picked into and punished, Taco. A heavy execution for sure here from Luminosity. I think positioning is going to be absolutely critical here for Gino unless he wants to get hyper-farmed off cooldown from this Erlang. But I love there the Alphawash pickup. I think that was specifically geared towards stripping that god away from Pretty Prime. Okay, well, I thought the Freya was going to be going over the way okay. of Pretty Prime here, but it's going to be the Zeus <laughs> locked in instead. I do like the Freya and the Offwash because her autos do pierce. Whenever you have that second ability active, you're able to take down all of the corpses at a single time. They both take the damage from it, but Zeus in his own right is going to be a strong one up against here too. Now, I thought you had the, the, the 360 dunk there, J-Mac, on the Freya call, but with Zeus coming in, it, I got to feel like that one's going over to Prime. But this is certainly still a strong one for them anyway if they give this Freya over to Anoraxia, which it likely looks like at this point. So uh, certainly they can still get some strong pressure out of that as Jingwei is going to round out this early pick for LG, at least this first picking phase. So far, just looking at these first three, how you feeling about the draft talk? I'm a little bit concerned here for Luminosity, if I'm being completely honest, Finch. I, I don't really see a whole lot of damage so far between the Terra, Outwash, and Jingwei, at least not early game or even some of the mid game. Sure. These are gods that you're mostly relying towards that late game aspect. So if Luminosity are anticipating Obey to kind of take the backseat on this one and, and go for a more passive play style, I'm just not seeing that happen right now because Erlang, Freya, Zeus, that is so much pressure and so much early game presence that I think Luminosity really need to buckle down with some form of early game aggression if they want to try and counteract uh, what Obey has to start with. And they definitely still have an option to try and cover that in the jungle, or it looks like LZ doesn't have that yet, so we'll see what it is that Weekend wants to go with it if maybe he tries to answer that early game a little bit more. Do you feel that same way that there's maybe not enough early pressure here from LG? Because I am seeing some good area control from the Terra from the Opwa. That's pretty much all I'm really seeing is a lot of just area denial out yeah. of here because Terra is you don't want to walk in my giant circle or you're going to get rude. And Alphash is, you don't want to walk in my damage or you're going to die, lose that healing that's so crucial to a lot of these gods as well. And Jingwei is just the goddess of safe farm. I'm also not even convinced that this Jingwei was the pick that Clout really wanted to go with here. I think this is more of a response pick towards the Freya and the Erling. Erling having that turtle form knockup and Freya with the banish right. that Jingwei can agility out of. So it's just a safety, and you know that you have a lot of survivability there, but again, the damage being the real concerning factor here. 
Sobek being banned here by LG. So if we do consider the Baron a solo ban as well as that Sobek, then some attention being paid a little bit towards towards Zelia potentially by LG. And I think that that's good recognition. Zelia isn't quite the hard carry that he used to be, but he's definitely always doing his job over there. He's a tremendous nuisance taco to have to worry about. What are you guys going to do if this is a Freya solo lane? Oh, I don't know. I we've, we've seen a lot of mages <laughs> in the solo lane. Some. I could see a little bit of spice coming through. And with that Kuzumbo ban away, Zalia doesn't seem like he wants to mess around with the Nene Kappas. I'm a little bit surprised. Kuzumbo very strong right now, but they're just making sure that one doesn't go over to the side of LG. So now the clock ticking on LG for their fourth pick as we switch back over to them. But Freya in the solo lane, J-Mac, I mean, you, you think that's p possible here in this one? It, it's very possible, but highly unlikely. I would say Zelia and Kiki, both solo <laughs> laners who love to play kind of out there that matchups. That is very but true. But I think in game number one, that's a little bit of a stretch. But I do like the Nemesis ban by Obey. For me, that tells that they want to go with a tankier lineup here, maybe drafting two Guardians in this final draft up here get one for their solo, get one for their support, or they could be looking for something even crazier. If it isn't Erlang support, like I'm thinking there's a possibility for, this is still pretty ambiguous from Obey because right. I think Erlang is plenty flexible between either Twig or Raffer, but I wouldn't mind seeing a Geb here for Obey yes. if this isn't an Erlang support intention, just because you get so much uh, safety from those shields. I, I think the Cataclysm as well would be really great at interrupting a lot of Luminosity's counter initiation. They already have such strong hyper carries from the Frey and the Zeus, right? Getting something like the Gab or another Guardian that can facilitate for them even better could work. Cerberus, if he selected, certainly could fill that gap. Before we even look at the Cerberus, Bakasura has now been selected. He's very strong, but right now, I mean, is he getting a ton of value out of the, the cripple field and, and, and all and the true damage just against what they have so far? I think the intention here for the Bakasura is solely to focus out either Freya or Zeus and hopefully kill them before they have a chance to dish out any of their damage. There's always the concern that the Lightning Storm or even Freya's Valkyrie's Discretion is going to be too much damage for those Baka minions off the Regurgitate. But that cripple effect is definitely something that Obey is going to have to be a little bit more careful towards. Okay, I saw the Ymir here and I thought, all right, cool, that's going to go to Zaylee in the solo lane. Zaylee <laughs> likes that Ymir solo. And then I saw the Nike, and now I have no idea where this entire composition is going. All I can guess here is that this is going to be Raffer probably going on to this Ymir, but this could be Twig taking Ymir in the jungle. I don't know where these three gods are going. I feel like it's a mirror for Raffer just because walls are really annoying for Jingwei and Terra to deal with in yeah. order to try and have their safety escapes. Erlang probably for Twig, that way he can have heavy pressure combined alongside of the Zeus and then Nike for Zelia over in solo lane where he'll also be relatively safe, but could encounter some difficulties up against that Jean Kui. I, I'm right there with you, J-Mag. That's where I would think those picks go, as Taco said, but you never really know with Obey. But Zelia does like him some Nike, so I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up with him. But Jean Kui to round out this draft. That's even more area that you do not want to be in inside the Jean Kui ultimate, the Apwash. And we already talked at length about the Terror with their Earth and Fury. It really feels like they kind of want to group up and fight. It just really all depends on whether or not Luminosity can play around this Terra's Earth and Fury. I think that's where a lot of their damage from their team fighting ultimates are going to have to play towards because right. otherwise Obey, they have so much frontline and pretty heavy disengage as, as well that I wouldn't be too surprised if they just go in trying to bait out the Bakasura ultimate or even just look to force out that Unleashing the Crypts of Alpwash and then suddenly Luminosity, they're kind of just left with nothing. If those abilities do get baited out, they can be in a tough spot. But I kind of like the pairing up with that Earth and Fury, right? Because they have so many of these abilities that kind of tick so you can get through those those stones kind of as quick as possible. That certainly could be fun for them. But we're seeing both these drafts here in their completion. If we're ignoring the Obey, the LG, J-Mac, which one of these drafts are you leaning a little bit more towards? I'm really liking the Obey draft here more than anything else. It's a lot of late game, but it also has that early and mid presence to get them to that late stage. Sounds like we might be leaning a little bit towards the draft at Obey here. I imagine, Taco, it's the same for you over there as well. Well, let's get these picks in action. No more waiting, no more delay. Obey versus LG. Game one, let's get it over to the casters. Good morning. How you guys doing out here? Tom Battinger and Ryan Agro Bailey on the horn. Thank you, John, J-Mac, and Taco. As usual, and as usual, Ryan, We've got a fantastic match, Obey versus LG. So excited to finally get to watch Obey play and excited that they have their full roster. I'm sure you heard all about it on the desk so we can move past it. But at the same time, I do think this Obey uh, draft 
is one that can be pretty volatile. Uh, obviously, Erlong Zeus is something that you have to be excited about as an Obey fan, and, and as well as uh, Ataraxia getting this Freya. But Ymir can be really, really good here or really, really bad because Terra is the premier punisher of immobile gods across all roles. And Ymir fits that bill. And if inbound is going to be there to consistently root out Raffer, set him up for Geno's damage, then Obey could fall behind. Am I... Is inbound supposed to only block the archers, or did he mess up there? No, that's totally fine. You you end up blocking about the same amount. It, okay. it doesn't really make it too much of a difference if you wait for those little moments or if you do it right away. So Hindu always loves to bring up, and, and me too, but Raffer on this Ymir. I mean, that was a legendary performance for Energy years ago, and Ymir is one of the characters. This is some rapper stuff right here. I was right just here. about to say that. The one-man inmate into the red buff, not really too concerned about the damage he's taken. He's already used the ice carpet. He's not going to get the last hit on that. Uh, is he just going to be first-blooded? No, he should be okay from here. In fact, he's actually bought enough time oh. for Ataraxia to get over here, and now red still goes. To Luminosity, now Rapper's in trouble. Yeah, he's going to take a lot of damage here. Sprints pop a Clout, blocking the way. Inbound one better. Clout still finding the basics, and inbound going to land the last hit. Gina with the rotation. Pretty prime lines up. That's one for one, but inbound. The support oh, no. starts it off with the Dubayoon, but they're not done yet. Clout and inbound dead to rights from here, but Weaken shows up. Maybe inbound can get out with some help from his jungler. In fact, I think he has. What is oh, this? maybe not. Maybe not. Twig should have cooldowns coming up soon, but maybe not soon enough. Twig does end up taking some tower shots and ends up getting inbound. An absolute bloodbath around red. So the idea there is that Raffer is going to poke Clout out enough that he's not willing to stand and fight once Ataraxia shows up. But Ataraxia isn't super scary just at level one. He, he needs to be able to hit level two in order to have that sort of kill potential. And Raffer, after missing the first uh, ice carpet, just doesn't have enough poke on the cloud to really make him respect it. Good rotation in from Prime. Gino not respecting the damage that Zeus can do with just the auto attacks. Prime doesn't get detonate, and that's absolutely the right call. Chain Lightning just did so much more for Obey from that spot. And it's also the advantage of having the information beforehand. Weekend can't go into this game and plan his route knowing that Raffer is going to stand at red buff and take his entire health bar and auto attacks, but Twig can. So Twig adjusts his route to get over there and clean up both dual lane members of Luminosity before Weekend can get there. I love the fact that you brought up sort of uh, the, the mentality beforehand as Weekend finds himself invaded by Twig on the Arlong Shen one more time. Because this is a strategy that Raffer kind of needs to be Ymir to do. Twig getting out of trouble there with a cute little blink. Ymir was the choice for Raffer when he was playing uh, for Energy a couple years ago. Made a huge statement, very, very... Uh, big performance but as you noted on the desk one of my favorite things you've said uh Ymir is always a blowout one way or the other always without a doubt you either end the game pretty quickly and he's dominant or the game feels like it's going to be over pretty quickly now there are the there is the rare game where the game is pretty close and then one Ymir wall changes it one way or the other either walls his teammate off by accident and loses a fight or a big jungle wall wins you a team fight and the game but more often than not, it feels like Ymir is always on one side of a blowout. And I think that this, the rest of this draft for Obey does lend itself to that mentality because Twig and Prime on, on Erlong and Zeus, these are characters that once they get a lead, feel nearly impossible to stop. And if Obey can get off to a big lead, then I don't see how Luminosity gets back into it particularly easily. But LG has a pretty snowball -y comp in their own right. So I expect this to, to break open after one or two big team fights. Shifting focus to the junglers real quick. Weaken on that Bakasura. He gets invaded by Captain Twig, and I love that he has the, the wherewithal to go into the enemy jungle just, despite the fact. Bakasura, I, I don't think you're playing Bakasura correctly if you're not invading. You can literally eat a minion camp. That's what the ability is called. So I want to see you, the Bakasura player, in the on the enemy side of the field, and that's what Weaken's doing. Even though Twig kind of has pressure, Weaken understands uh, how to use the character, and I think that's an important important part of playing with Bakasura. It's a smart pick up against Captain Twig, who's really known for his ability to get in and steal your camps away from you consistently and can't really out-secure you if you're playing Bakasura, <laughs> so I think it makes sense. It's also good at punishing a character like Ymir, can get up and over his wall. The slow from Regurgitate really hurts Ymir, and he just he can't get away from you once you use that ultimate. But with this horrific emblem, it might be difficult for Weekend to get those kills. Left side, the invade from Luminosity Gaming, looking for the 
purple. Heteraxia low. Clout gonna dash. Great wall. Wall from Raffer. Even if he dies here, he's done his job. Freeze misses. And Clout inbound chasing him down. Will get the kill. Twig a little bit too slow on the rotation. But again, your support saved your carry. That's what you're supposed to do. Purple buff does go the way of Luminosity Gaming. All in all, Obey doesn't really come out of that too far behind whatsoever. In, in fact, you could probably make the argument that they come out of that slightly ahead, even with the kill going to LG, just because the beef used by Cloud. We can actually get to use that regurgitate underneath this tower, but Kiki's the one to get it there. I love that we can use his minions to tank the tower. That lets Kiki reset the tower aggro and then get in there and be able to finish off that kill without any threat. Not done yet. We can, looking for the invade, attacking on Captain Twig. He's low, and Twiggy's gonna kill him. You can kill Kiki he has here no too. Mana either. Yeah, he's in trouble. Oh, but misses the pin. That might be enough to drop this kill. 72 transformations, pretty long cooldown. Kiki gets enough mana for a card, and that will send Twig packing. We see a lot of Erlong Shen as of late, and yeah. we've seen a lot of Erlong Shens really prioritize using that turtle form of 72 transformations. And I really think Mink is utter underutilized. It is. It, it hits like an absolute truck, and you get Fatalis for free. It's insane. <laughs> and Twig there threads the needle to hit onto Weaken, doesn't worry about the knockup, doesn't worry about getting himself the Hell Shield. He knows that he just needed damage and the ability to stick onto Weaken and maybe even stick onto uh, Kiki afterwards. Great usage there of an underutilized part of Erlong's kick. So we can go ahead and take the tumble. After a really, really mechanically sound play on the right side, Bakasaur can kind of seem brain dead at times. He's just a, you know, left click to victory type character. But like you said, he, he used the minions to tank the tower. And also don't forget the cripple field. He tosses it down south, forcing the Nike to walk. And that's so Kiki can, can just collapse on him. Either you walk into the, everything about that play was really cute. I enjoyed it for sure. So we can, the, uh, the luminosity jungler coming out on top for the moment before he falls down there right after the fact. Talaria boots on him as well. Nice wall. Oh no, Prime in some serious trouble. Aegis pretty early on. Good damage, but he still falls to the hand of Weekend. It's a double for Weekend, but Twig oh, might be able to clean up. Well, he's gonna either clean up or get cleaned up. Three players knocked up. Captain Twig, I like that play. He determines in the middle of the turtle form whether or not he wants to fight. Either it's a disruption maneuver or it's an initiation maneuver, and Twig keeps walking forward because he realizes that's not something he's going to win. So I like that play by Captain Twig right there, but a double kill for Weekend on the Baka. That's a character you don't want to start giving early kills to. Love the way that Weekend positions in that fight. Kind of use Geno in inbound as the bait almost. Let him sit there on the mid camps. It's so appetizing. It's, a, it's an opwash in the jungle, and we've got a Zeus, so let's just wall him off, and then we're good. And as soon as the wall goes up from Raffer, that's the ghost signal for Weaken, because the only way that he doesn't kill Prime is that he gets walled off, is forced to jump, and then could get bursted because he's away from his team. But as soon as Raffer used that wall, we can use that opportunity. But there was a ward there from Obey, but it didn't cover the right half of that rock, and that's where Weaken was lurking. Kiki and Zelia here on the short side, nice and even. But Jean Kui does have a little bit of a of an edge against the Nike because he can interrupt that that rend. So now that Kiki's at the spot, the spot where he's kind of one shotting the wave, he's really going to be a thorn in the side of Zelia if he decides to stay here. He can also opt to make the early rotations and have an impact there. But we'll see where he goes with the Jean Kui and how he really wants to play this one out. It's very smart, I think, that Kiki went for the Zhang Kui in general in this game because if you watch Obey and the way that they've played in the solo lane in the back half of Season 5, it hasn't been a lot of the aggressive picks. In fact, it's been a lot of this Nike. As Twig gets his 72 transformations interrupted, but Weekend getting bursted quickly. Detonate should be coming for Prime. Weekend did some damage, but Prime is going to turn it around. Two for LG as Captain Twig falls to the wayside. Kiki chases Zalia all the way to the Tier 2 tower. Raffer puts up a wall, but I'm not sure it's going to be good enough. He's in trouble, and he's got a freeze. Is he good? No, there's no way he's good. Gino's fleeting breath might just do it all by itself. Indeed, it does. The whole time, the taunts, by the way. Totally, totally fine by me. I, I love whenever the, the players try and get at each other's heads like that. But, but this draft, so Ymir is picked here because Luminosity's jungle team fight is, is overpowered. It's just too good. There, there's no chance Obey can do anything to take these jungle fights, even with a Zeus on their side. 
So oh, they pick the Ymir to try and separate LG in the midst of the jungle and, and turn these jungle fights in their favor. But it just hasn't worked out so far. And Luminosity, instead of being scared of and playing away from what their comp does best, which is just run you down and with their AoEs in the jungle, then you end up play they play into it more and say, sure, show us that you can actually beat it. We'll just W at Prime, and there's no amount of peel you can give him to save his life, and that's what happened. Prime got good damage, but ended up falling anyway. Cool new graphic at the bottom showing the in the damage from individual abilities out there for you players at <laughs> 900 home. damage almost from Empty the Crypts. That'll do it. <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty good. Gino did a lot of damage in in, in that team fight and that is the entire reason you pick Upwash, to yes. do a lot of damage in the jungle. You're not going to get a lot in lane most of the time. These players are too good to get hit by the corpse surge, and, and that really is what you need to set up your combo. But in the jungle, they don't really have a choice, and, and Prime doesn't really have a choice. And I wonder where Prime's going to go after this Book of Thoth and Boots. It could be something like the you could dead. rush a Book of the Dead yeah. early on, but that's pretty expensive. I, I might be looking wing. Another time to empty the crypts. A beautiful wall from Raffer is going to set Gino up for his own death. And yeah, when it comes to Ymir play, genetics recently has looked really clean. The European uh, support for Insignum, the minor league representatives. But Raffer is, for, for my money, the original, the, the OG Ymir. Yep. And walls like that are, that's that's not a standard wall position. No. I, if you're tell, trying to tell me anyone but Raffer is the iconic Ymir, then <laughs> I, I don't really know what to tell you. The, the man changed the way that this character is played. It's little things like that. He gets out the ultimate from Cloud. And now he's going to go into the ultimate, pop it real quick, but it slowed down everybody for uh -oh. Captain Twig oh, and man. Pretty Prime. Welcome to land, Prime. Big boy plays there from Obey Alliance. Left side is all luminosities. Cloud's going to turn on Raxia, but quickly fall back. Obey still trailing, but a nice buy-in at the 11-minute mark. This is the this is the Zeus effect where in the early game you kill him and you're like oh okay we're good okay see you later uh, you kill him and you're good everything's fine but eventually you try and do it again and then he just one shots you yeah. and Weekend just got absolutely crushed Prime's positioning from that fight is perfect he doesn't get greedy by coming up and over purple buff rock where a lot of mid laners would like to go from there he understands that he can basically wanted his his chain lightning around that corner by placing his shield in the right spot and using inbound as the catalyst to get the damage towards weaken drops the ultimate in the perfect spot and is able to punish weaken and the rest of lg you know it's funny i think that movie is only relevant because of the current bullets you are absolutely right. I don't think most people can tell you anything else, but as far as that reference, you hear it all the time. <laughs> Prime coming out with the clean stuff there. I'm loving it. Anoraxia, quiet on the Freya, but Obey are supposed to be quiet. Right now at 13 minutes, they're down about 1,500 gold, 2,000 depending on the moment, and the camp's cleared, but that's expected. Prime, late game. Raxia, late game. Zelia, late game. You're not, if you're down 1,500, you're kind of doing it right with this comp. I, I think that Obey is still in a spot where they can take these fights even down by a little bit of gold. Yes. But LG has done a great job of playing to their composition strengths. And they, they're not showing up and playing scared in this matchup, which is always something you're worried about whenever you're looking at a, a bottom SPL seed up against one of the tops. Anoraxia with a lift and Raffer with a wall. Raffer gets stunned by the edge, but the purple buff will go to the team that owns it. This talisman of energy coming out of Zelia in the solo lane is something that we don't see a whole lot of, but I actually love it here. And, and let me tell you why. The, the, this Heartward Amulet from Raffer means that Zelia can't really go for Heartward. Pestilence would be fine in this position and probably actually necessary whenever he starts to rotate. But in lane, it might not be quite as valuable as he'd like. And instead, I think Talisman of Energy is a really underrated item. That passive is insane. And think about how Kiki's going to be carding him as he walks away after the wave is cleared and then try and rotate. And, and Dahlia would normally be very slow. Well, with the Talisman of Energy, he'll be slightly less slow, at least, and be able to affect these team fights a little bit earlier on. I think this item is really, really strong. I do think that they will need a Pestilence at some point. Prime Agreed. picked up a Divine Ruin, so there's something there. But at the end of the day, you need more than just Divine Ruin, in my mind, up against Terra's Earth and Fuel. Also a huge fan of how it affects the rest of the squad. 
Ataraxia yeah. and Pretty Prime on characters that are basic attack oriented. Uh, Zeus is a character that you never want to build attack speed on, but boy, does it feel good when you've got it. And I think that's what Talos is going to do. Zalia's got to use that ultimate, and Weakened is just chewing through it right now. Zalia does have that leap available, but holding it, Weakened has got right on top of him. There's no way Zalia gets out of this. Kiki finishes it off. Another taunt coming down from Captain Quig. Oh, and it's no. just going to set up Prime. Rapper with a freeze. Rapper with an ultimate. Captain Twig with the kill. The crypts will be opened, and that'll dissuade any more aggression. Although Captain oh. Twig didn't get the message. He's still on the chase. Bobby trying to run. He's pinned down. Here's the toss of the shield. It's three on one. Inbound gets the root. That means he's going to be safe and sound. Nice play from inbound. It's going to lead to the jungle invade from Obey. And that's basically, they're shortening up this lead for sure. All right, now I said earlier I really like when the players taunt to try and get in, get in each other's heads, but um, standing over the body of the person you just killed to taunt and then not running away from the Erlong Shen <laughs> that's coming so you get double taunted into Zeus damage is usually not the call. He's lucky I missed that. I would, uh... He's lucky Look, I missed that. <laughs> to be fair, that nine turns blessing taunt is pretty big. He likely still gets hit by it. Why are you? Why are you being the nice guy? To be fair, you're never the also, nice guy. Also, we can probably like don't do that next time. <laughs> Sixteen minutes in, and we've got a tie game here, folks. Mid game, basically, and our doorstep. And Obey, as they have a late game team, they've treaded water through the early stages, and now they're starting to get that power online. Big penetration being built here by Pretty Prime. He's going to start to really swing. At the same time, weaken across the way, he's got his Fatalis now, and that's where it's going to be really scary. The Hasted Katana is going to allow him to just chew through people and not slow down. And this is always that area of time where I get really scared of Bakasura. Late game, sometimes you just surround him and, and kill him. Right now, this is where the Demon Queller dies. I'm surprised that Zalia goes for Mystical Mail instead of Midgardian Mail after getting chased down by, by Weakened so easily during that last death. But at the same time, this is kind of the curse of Nike where you kind of feel like you need to as a Blink Earth and Fury comes on the Captain Twig. Inbound misses the stun. Prime did tons of damage to the back line. And now this is going to be the oh, turnaround. No. Double pin. The Crips are empty defensively. But he, and here comes Kiki, frozen on the backside. Gino's dead from a distance. Detonate. We'll see you later. Oh. Double kill for Prime as he deletes Weakened. Clout going to take care of Prime and have to find a way out. It's a two for one so far. Raxi is stunned up. Here's help from Raffer. Kiki, he can't get the kill. Kiki needs the card. He gets it onto Raxia, but I don't know if that's going to be enough, Tom. It should be, unless he's got one. the Aegis. He does not burn down. Is inbound the only survivor for LG. And LG should be thanking their lucky stars that Clout makes a perfect rotation in from that left side. He insta-kills Prime with three big auto attacks. And this is kind of the story of Luminosity for a lot of season five, where they're doing pretty well and it starts to slip away. And then Clout is the stop gap to keep them in it. I love the pathing from inbound. He gets around, the Raffer sees him anyway. Nice pathing from inbound. I think he might die for it. Yeah, so the, the pathing is good in the first place, but then to stick around and try and exactly. sentry ward is what gets him killed ultimately. And that's been inbound's problem so far since moving up to the SPL, is he'll have these moments where you go, oh, that was really good instincts. He, he did this really, really well. And then he just uh, does something that should be obviously not done. And he gets punished for it very easily at this level. I, You know, I think it's, it's uh, and I don't want to say it's unfair because, homie, you're on the stage and it's all about relative strength. But I think it's just very obvious rookie stuff. Yes. He, like you said, he's got the instincts. I think I think Bobby inbound, one of the better personalities, not just a fun guy, but I think he's an infectious teammate in the right sort of way. Yes. I think he does and thinks the right direction, but his decision-making can be out of whack because he's learning. He's just been called up at the fall split, and he's got a lot to learn as far as this... I don't want to say meta game, but this this league. He's a world champion on the console side, and he's strong, and that league has its own merits. But this is a different world as far as strategy and approach to the game, and those are the things that he's going to have to learn. And if I'm Luminosity, he's got to learn them fast. Yeah, this is time to go. It, I agree with you. The the I don't think inbound was going to be getting any better in relation to getting closer to SPL level by continuing to play 
in this Mike console league. He the, reached the, his ceiling there. Exactly. The metas and the, and the way that the game is played are just a little bit too different. And so he was always going to have these throwing pains. It's just a little bit more exasperated because he got called up right before placements. Yep. So there's a lot more eyes on him. I, I think if Inbound has a full year to be ready for the SPL, he, he's a star. Captain Twig with a taunt. A quick turnaround. We can get be fine. And you know who Inbound should be watching and studying from their career? It should be Raffer. Th that is the closest comparison I think you can make between what Inbound's ceiling is as a player and, and what Raffer has accomplished and been able to do with his own very unique play style. Raffer doesn't play the support role like everybody else does. I mean, it's, the, the level of disrespect he has is unlike any other. Kiki's so cheeky, stuck in the corner. The disrespectees is real. Pretty Prime gets the kill off of a fantastic play from Raffer one more time. Bay Alliance sieging the tier one tower, and I mean sieging. They are just forcing this tower, and it's gonna crumble. That's first kill in the mid lane for Obey Alliance. Now they can move towards fire, but Pyromancer is not gonna be up for another moment. In fact, yeah, I was gonna say, Obey might just end up pulling this, and they do. We can drop some ward, and that might be enough to scare them off of it. Prime's looking to set the trap with Twig, and trap set. And they got some dinner tonight. Gino falls quickly. Uh, we can be pinged out, jumps away from Twig, and it doesn't really separate them at all. Here comes Zelia for inbound. Twig chasing Weaken off screen. Zelia and inbound having their own little fight. Meanwhile, there's Twig versus Weaken. Knock him as good, and it chases out Weaken's ultimate. And both characters have to walk away. Close, but no cigar for Weaken and for Twig. That winged blade, the big reason that Twig can not only keep up with Weaken, but also escape from Weaken once he drops that recurring tape. Pyromancer will go down in the direction of Obey Alliance. Small minor objective for them. So 21 and a half in. Obey Alliance has eked out a nice 4,000 gold lead here. 16 to 13, read the kills. Obey just got the tier one tower. Luminosity trying to answer back, but tier one of their own, Ryan. But again, Rapper with the wall. Still not enough to save the tier one. It does crumble for LG. They get at least a little bit of gold recouped after those losses. And I was touching on Zelia's build earlier. I said I needed to see a Pestilence still, and that's exactly what he goes for after the Midgardian mail. And, the, and this Talisman of Energy also shores up another weakness of this Obey comp, which is that they don't kill towers very well. Yeah. Uh, Ataraxia is playing Freya, a god that traditionally has very uh, a lot of struggles killing structures. Her, a lot of builds that you'll see out of Freya players these days do better because it's a lot of Book of Thoth and Polynomicon builds. Polynomicon very good against towers because it does deal that extra damage that mages really lack. But Ataraxia is going a different route here. He goes for Bancroft's Demonic Grip and an early Rod of Tahuti to try and get those finishing blows onto the low members of Luminosity. And this is a fine build for, for Ataraxia. It, it really does emphasize his ability to stand and fight a little bit better with the Bancrofts and with the ability to, to really deal a ton of damage with that ultimate once you get Rod and the enemy and you're both low with your opposition. But it does mean that he's worse at pushing towers as you would expect. So the Talisman of Energy gives extra attack speed to not only him, but Pretty Prime and Captain Twig in order to try and kill those towers faster. Fire Giant being focused on here. Luminosity's around. We can ult. Any damage to Twig but takes it himself? Oh, hey, Elias on the south side. There's the ultimate from Prime. Yeah, I guess. Gino's in trouble. Kiki so cheeky being attacked by Anoraxia, but it's Zelia that puts Gino in the ground. Inbound up top, going to be dealing with Captain Twig. Dash is good. Knock up better from Clout. Respect from the Hunter, but the blink is good enough. Inbound goes down for the count. Kiki could be next. Obey not looking for fire here, surprisingly enough. Instead, they're chasing these kills, and I don't think they're going to get a whole lot out of this chase. Prime being forced back to base means that they're a little bit less likely to be able to get fire for free, but I still think they could have pulled it from that position and been able to at least force a better fight than Zelia chasing a man with nipple rings around them. Okay. Well, Zelia might even get that kill. While Zelia's team gets the Fire Giant, now he's got to deal with Weaken. Fire Giant goes to way of Obey Alliance. Zelia doesn't have ultimate, so this is actually a big problem. He is dealing damage back to Weaken. The big disarm is very strong, but it's just a momentary lapse. Weaken gets the kill. Solo lane for Fire Giant. That's as classic as it comes, though, Ryan. And Obey find themselves in the driver's seat. 
they've been in the driver's seat for a little bit now. These fights from Luminosity just haven't been well communicated, it looks like to me. They're on different targets. I, I praised Clout's late rotation in mid lane a while ago, but that time he needs to be there around that fire giant pull. He's just too late to that fight. What's the difference? LG started this game off hot, objectively looking good, and, and now they, they look kind of disjointed. It was 3v3s and 4v4s and, and the smaller skirmishes for Luminosity that were going their way. But now that Obey has all five members all grouped up and together, Obey has just been working better as a unit so far. And, and that really shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, Obey has been the same roster for this entire season. Luminosity makes a, a, a couple changes pretty recently. But they definitely need to try and get on the same page because you can tell that they can play with these guys. I mean, even, even despite the, the fact that we're talking about they haven't won a fight in a little bit, they're only down 6K <laughs> for now. But they, they do need to work that out. That human mirror wall is an attorney. It really, really is. <laughs> it was just funny watching players kind of sit outside the wall. We're like, okay, we're just waiting. Can and I come know, in yet? And you know Rapper's just left. He's pushing up the mid lane. Ymir has good clear, so I don't hate this plan for him to push up the mid lane. But he's a team fight character. I need to see him with the rest of his team if that's what they want to do. Quick's going in early here. Going to chase out the Crips. And this is exactly how you play against Op Wash. You got to do the hokey pokey. You put your right foot in, and you get out as soon as he pushes the button, and then you get right back in again as soon as it's down. Small blink. Ultimate coming out from Kiki, and Kiki just immediately erased, weakened right behind his longtime teammate. Inbound doing what he can, but dashes right into the damage until Ataraxia whoops him out because he wanted the kill for himself, Tom. Well, Pretty Prime gets the double kill. Again, low structure damage. Obey Alliance trying to look for the Phoenix. If they get the Phoenix, they can keep walking forward. Raffer shows no signs of slowing down. He's waving, he's flexing, he's taunting. Cloud and Gino here, playing D. Big freeze coming out from Raffer. No damage on the Titan yet. Half a minute on the respawn timers. Damage coming out from Luminosity Gaming, and it's enough to push Obey Alliance out. Ryan, I respect the shot, I respect the try, and I respect the retreat. I, I do as well. The Obey doesn't really give anything up here, right? No. Because they can still reset and go get these Tier 2 towers because they're up by 11k yep. at this point. So Luminosity's not going to defend those Tier 2s anyways. They don't lose that opportunity. The The end call was definitely ambitious with two Tier 2 towers still standing, but I, it, no harm, no foul. I want to see that. That's what I want to see. I, I say this all the time with respect to rookies with, small, with just, uh, seemingly small god pools. Gino is actually in this game. Gino played Athena every game for like 10 games straight. And people kind of came at him and I said, do it until somebody tells you you can't. Yeah. That is what you're supposed to do. And Obey Alliance, they're like, well, I mean, they've got two players. There's a bunch of structures up, but let's try to kill the Titan and make them say that we can't. Because if Luminosity Gaming just sit back or make a mistake, Obey win the game. So they force LG to say no and they fall back once they realize they, they can't jump. The only thing that could come back to, to haunt Obey is that Prime uses both relics to try and survive in that position. Okay. And if Luminosity can identify that and maybe use it as a window to try and kill Prime in the next minute and a half, about, because he does have those, those beads upgraded and they're coming up a little bit sooner, then maybe that call will come back to haunt Obey. But overall, I agree with you that you don't lose too much. Fire Giant's not going to be up for a little bit. They, so they don't have the Fire Giant buff right now, but like I said, they're up 11k, so they'll get this tier 2 tower anyways. Zelia's virtually unkillable. He's playing this Nike. I love the way that he's approached this game. Uh, he's got an incredible amount of HP. We were talking about the items individually, right? He's got 3,000 HP. Let's look at that ultimate as well. So the shield for Nike is a percent health deal. 60% if you pop the two. It's absurd. And it's all about the build. So he's going to get 60% of his health over there for the shield, 40 without even popping the two. And just like that, every item, the boots or whatever, but he starts off with the Talisman of Energy, Mystical Mail, Pestilence. All of these items have a ton of HP. He understands what the character's doing. Quick to chase down here, beats out, but 
like to fall, to be honest with you. Oh, uh, Mantle Stun might be enough. He should have that 72 transformation soon enough, but he's slowed. Obey get fire while this chase is going on, but yeah, Twig looking dead to rights. Killing the Arlong Shen here while the fire giant is going on might seem curious, but LG can't take that fight. Nope. And killing Arlong Shen with a fire giant buff is absolutely that that is the right play. I like that. And just to end cap on my on sort of my Zalia rant, Nike, an under selected character, a more under misunderstood character on top of that. Zelia not only is playing the character, he's building her right. The Mystical Mail, sometimes it feels like you don't have enough buttons to press as, as Nike. Mystical Mail fills that role. Her whole job is to be a frontline oriented character. Mystical Mail gonna help that out. I absolutely love everything Zelia is doing on this Nike. Uh, this is the textbook if you wanna play Nike in your games. Look, you look at the player damage charts, you go, oh, he's not doing anything. But you have to factor in the passive that is keeping Twig and Prime up and alive and making them do more damage it, it, it nike definitely show does a lot more than yeah. the stats show when you're watching a game like this weakens a character that ignores protections zelia on a health oriented character kind of deals with true damage better than if you're just a, a thick takey jean qui for example jean doesn't do well against Bach because he ignores your protections with butcher blades building health or a health oriented character is the right way to go and again don't forget the disarm against Baka. It's huge. I, I, I think Obey came into this draft really nicely, and Zelia kind of just doing the right things. So Obey has is, is been winning these team fights, and Luminosity, during these, during these moments where Obey is just kind of doing what they need to do, killing Gold Fury, clearing their camps, there's, there's a lot of team discussion that's going on about what we need to do differently, and apparently the answer was damage, because Inbound picks up a Soul Reaver in that fifth item slot. He's pretty tanky at this point, and... and the idea is that he's trying to get in there and blink Earth and Fury, hit the whole team, and kill everyone first. Oh, Captain Twig trying to kind of do the same thing. Knocking up Kiki, bringing him down to half, and somebody blows him up. He's down to 10%, but Obey take as much damage. That time, they fight a little bit more into the Apuashal. They did it nigh perfectly last time. And LG, that's why I like this Apuash Jean Kui combination. Because those are those are abilities that essentially you want to trip the alarm and then back out before the response comes. So you go, you force Gino's ult, and then you back out, check your watch, and then you go back in as soon as it's down. Is this after or before you throw the brick through the window? So you, you throw the brick through the window to test response time. Right. That's the that's when you're casing the joint. This is they're actually trying to break the base. So there, there's there is no question about response time. We know the response time. Now we're trying to dance around said response time. Go ahead, trip the alarm, let the first responses show up. Go ahead, round the bout, round the back, and then re-siege once again. The problem is Luminosity have a second string. They've got a second line like a hockey team. Kiki's gonna jump over the boards and then ult again. Twig in the mid lane, trying to go on one-on-one -on -one up against Weekend. Weekend happy to take that fight, but Twig trying to turn it around, forces out the ultimate from Weekend and walks away nice and healthy. Rough stuff right there. It's interesting, taunts against or basic attack for characters sometimes come back to bite you. I didn't like that ultimate from Weekend, uh -oh. and I don't like that ultimate from Raxia either. He doesn't want to use the beam. There it is. Go side from Kiki, looking for Ataraxia, but might be able to get far enough away. Great zoning ultimate oh. by Prime, and then he turns around and knocks them both down. For as great of the ultimate was from Prime, just as equally poor ultimate from Geno. They, Luminosity played that perfectly, and then Prime just walls off the entirety of the enemy team with the Rainstorm. LG could not rejoin Kiki and left him out to dry because they Whoa. had no other choice. Clout tries to make the game-changing play and gets put down quickly. Gino now in some serious trouble. Twig and Zalia all over him. Prime hits a dozen by himself. Papa doing it all. Clout might have made the game-changing play. Two double kills for Pretty Prime. And the man will secure game number one for Obey Alliance. Fantastic job. They had a late game composition. They were trailing in the beginning. No mind, no care. Late game, they take it. And it's all game one. Man, o Obey played that so well towards the mid game where it really was just, that was the Twig and Prime show. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you looked at the player damage charts. It was those two, literally all of Luminosity in the middle, and then the other three members of Obey. It, 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 
Raffer, Zalia did their frontline job. Raffer was walling people. Ataraxia was kind of just along for the ride in that one. Listen, if you've, if you've listened to me commentate any of this, if you've watched any of my videos, you know how I feel about this Obey team. If Obey wants to win, you feed the Swede. Captain Twig sets up Prime. That's the playbook. What do they do here in game one? They pick the Zeus. They pick the Arlong Shen. They do the playbook. If you're an Obey fan at home, just ask them to control C, control V. Copy paste over and over again. It was perfect. I mean, Luminosity had some good moments through the early stages. I think that they're... Uh, inability to group up at the right times and, and take those five on five fights was a little bit too wrong. It, when Kiki's blinking in, you need weaken there alongside him because otherwise the, you'll see what happens in that last fight where everyone just turns and kills John Kui very, very easily. But remember, Weekend had already lost the ultimate in the mid lane when trading with Captain Twig. Twig is doing that by design. He's trying to chase out Regurgitate because he knows that if Kiki doesn't have that help, it's an easy team fight for Obey. And again, fantastic performance off of a fantastic story. Prime's here at land, baby, and he's bringing the wins for Obey. For a deeper look, let's go to the desk. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Ryan. Prime having an excellent game for himself. And what a luxury when your team can have Freya on it and you don't even really need her because Twig and Prime are just having that kind of game. Taco, I mean, what stood out for you the most in that one? Because Obey looked great. Uh, Ataraxia just had to go on full cruise control. He's, he's there to help <laughs> out if they need him, but by the looks of things, Captain Twig and Pretty Prime pretty much had everything under control. I think the early game started off really hot for Luminosity. They had right. a couple of really promising picks, but the issue that they encountered was the same one we brought up right before this match even began it's that Zeus juice it's so much damage for them to try and deal with and I want to ask you, J-Mac, about the way that this game started off. You remember that, 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 that beginning of the game, right, where Raffer is at the red buff, and he ends up kind of giving his life away, but it's a 3-2 trade in favor of Obey. And the big thing with that is both of the kills that Luminosity got were onto inbound. The right, tank, yeah. And Terra is not one of the best gods to be able to really do a whole lot with with those first two bounties there, and then giving two kills over to Captain Twig, one kill over to Pretty Prime was just not a hot start there for Luminosity. About the worst spread that could have gone for LG, basically. And they did do a good job kind of bouncing back. But there's that fight that sticks out for me around that right side by, like, the Harpies on the on the uh, solo side of the map, where inbound kind of goes just a, like a hair too far forward. And then that fight kind of turned things around. They get a Gold Fury on the back of it. It's just so dangerous to expend all of your cooldowns whenever you're the support player. I don't think that inbound was expecting uh, Captain Twig to just immediately turn on him in that uh, jungle corridor, but if you use all of your cooldowns in competitive play, this is the big boy series. They are yeah. not going to play around. They will collapse on you and just go for the turn and burn. He expended a lot just to get into that fight more than anything else. He used the blink, he used the Earth and Fury, which is only onto a single target. And Earth and Fury is right. one of the best team fighting ultimates that either of these teams have expended to him. The amount of damage protect, the damage reduction that you get, the amplified damage, using it onto a single target is just not the way to go here. And you can see it, see Pretty Prime look like he was just untouched in these fights. And this isn't exclusively Captain Twig and Pretty Prime working fantastically together to bring home this victory. I think that this was also some incredibly wise drafting from Obey 2 because yes. not only did they have a lot of combined damage between their carries, but the Nike and Amir posed so many different issues for clout on that Jingwei. He never really had much of an opportunity, if any at all, to look for any backline casting of his auto attacks, of his abilities. It just didn't feel like he really got to be involved and anybody who knows luminosity we've been preaching the same thing all year if clout is doing well chances are luminosity is going to win that match and by not only shutting him out it, it's just the right way to go i think there was so much fighting around that jungle solo side of the map that both the hunters really never got to have much impact and how impressive is it really that zalia got to be so important later on in the game when really kiki kind of was running the early game i would say especially the laning phase and i think that is a bright spot for lg they can look back on kiki's laning phase and say that he did a good job there on that jungle and maybe try and transition that a little bit better but zalia in the late game i mean you, you could not kill him he was in the back line with the mystical mail taking dropping down the shields baiting out bakasura ultimates all the time Time. That's just what you want to do as a Nike. You understand as a Nike, your early game is not your strong suits. Once yeah. you get two and then that final third Laurel online, that's when Nike really starts to become the unkillable tank herself, but also providing that extra power and movement speed for the rest of your team. And leaving Zalia unchecked almost the entire game, I think was a bit of a mistake there by LG. 
I, I actually really like this comp from Luminosity. I think that it might have just been a little bit too high execution for this roster. I, sure. If you maybe gave the same comp to, say, Energy, for example, I think that you might see a possible different result. But I don't think... I, I think Luminosity really just lost sight of utilizing the Alpois, Jean-Cui, and the Bakasura ultimates together.